Hey, what's up, guys? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles, coming at you from the middle of nowhere, Indiana, at the Midwest Rep Rap Festival. And I'm with CME CNC today, and we're going to finally review the Parts Daddy. It's this giant 18-foot tall FDM 3D printer. I don't think it's the largest in the world by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still pretty damn awesome. And we're going to go over it in some detail in this video. What's up, Joe? What's up, little JoJo? So right now, the Parts Daddy is printing out a stool that's capable of even supporting me at 301 pounds. These things are awesome. They take about 13 hours to print, and they're using PLA pellets to feed this machine. Now, we're going to go through each one of the parts on this machine, and I'll show you the detail, but this was all built in-house. And the cool thing is, it's all powered by the standard electronics you'd find in any 3D printer. It's just using larger motors and larger drivers, and that's it. Everything else is very much similar to a desktop 3D printer. So if you're familiar with 3D printing, you're probably used to a point four millimeter diameter on the nozzle. This actually has a four millimeter diameter on the nozzle. It's huge. You can see the layer striations are massive, but when you're printing stuff this large, it actually looks very cool. So the hot end on this thing uses about 700 watts of current. You can see all of the wires going in there that it takes to deliver that 700 watts and the insulation to be able to melt the PLA and deposit it at that speed and that density. Now, all of the parts on this thing are machined in-house by uh, CME CNC. They actually have all of the routers and the CNC machines to basically tool all of this aluminum. Now, what makes it 18 feet tall is actually this T-slot aluminum here. It's massive, going all the way up to the ceiling. And you can see they're actually counterbalancing all of the weight of the print head here, which involves a vacuum cleaner that sucks up a ton of pellets. They're supporting it with counterweights that pull down. That way, they're not putting that massive load on the stepper motors. But even so, all that weight does require a beefier stepper motor, which you can see right here. This is a much larger stepper motor than you'd see on a, on a normal 3D printer, but it's also not so large because of the counterweights. Obviously, without the counterweights, it'd have to be able to lift the full weight of that, and that would be just a tremendous job. So having the counterweights is actually a really cool idea. Now, the material comes in forms of pellets. You can see there's some colorant in the pellets um, mixed in at about a one-third ratio, and the PLA beads here, and they all come out of a garbage can over here and run up through this tube all the way into this $20 vacuum cleaner here so when the when the vacuum kicks on this flap comes up and it sucks the uh, pellets up um, through the tube from the barrel and then when it when the vacuum turns off the flap opens and all the pellets right here drop right out into the hopper and then the vacuum cleaner feeds it down through this 3d printed chamber down here and it ends up in this little tube you see that little tube right there now there's an auger in the bottom of that that compresses it down into a four inch heater section down here that then melts it so that it can deposit it just like a filament that way this printer doesn't require filament that looks like garden hose you can just keep feeding it with pellets now there is a sensor right here that detects when it's getting low on pellets and it tells the vacuum cleaner to kick on and suck more into the machine so it can be continuously fed and that way you can print massive things. Now here's one of the stools that they created that actually has butt cheeks melded into it. And this is actually the most comfortable design. I don't know why they keep printing the other ones, but this guy right here supports my full weight. No problem, right off the printer. And it took 13 hours of continuous printing to produce that. Now the entire printer runs off of a 15 amp circuit. I mean, it's pretty much at about the max it can do. And the speed is kind of constrained to how fast the heater can melt the plastic. That's why it doesn't appear to be going as fast as say a desktop 3D printer. But if you factor in the actual scale, it's moving at a pretty good trot. You can also see they have a cooling fan over there. It looks like it's straight up out of the dollar store. And of course, they've adorned the whole thing with RGB LEDs because everybody knows there is an RGB craze. And if it doesn't have RGB LEDs, it's just it's not worth anybody's attention. Now, the cool thing is the hopper on here was actually 3D printed also. Um, so the machine has, in fact, already upgraded itself, which is a cool trait that all 3D printers share. Everybody loves heading out to Thingiverse and just plopping out some new parts to upgrade the ones on any printer that they end up buying. Now, you guys might find that to be a familiar sight. That is just a straight-up normal LED controller. It's running a basic Marlin firmware. Even though this thing is gigantic, a lot of people jump to the conclusion that it's actually using a lot of upgraded hardware, but really it isn't. All of the electronics are absolutely tiny, except 
for those stepper motors. That is it. The only thing they had to beef it up to scale and that it uses more power. But the cool thing is a lot of people think this runs off 220. And the fact that it runs off 110 is actually pretty surprising because this thing is printing monstrously large items. Now the printer consists of a Delta design, which means it uses three independent arms that slide up and down on the extrusion. And that produces the movement of the print head assembly. It's just like the Delta printers that see me CNC makes and sells like the row stock, which is a really neat design to watch versus the Cartesian printers, which use belts to pull on an X, Y, and Z axis, which aren't nearly as interesting to watch. But the cool thing about this design is that it's just got belts that pull these up and down the arms all the way to the ceilings and with the counterweights. So you pretty much have a limitless Z axis. All you have to do is add bigger belts and longer extrusion and maybe put some cables in to support it if you made it any taller than this and you could literally print to the moon. So guys, this is Steve, the brainchild of the parts daddy that just barely fits in here. Steve, when the hell compelled you to create such a monstrosity of a 3D printer? Uh, you know, it, it came about on our forum. The guys were asking, well, what's it take to scale this up? And I'm like, well, I'll just sketch something up. You know, we got our little Rostock Max printers. Yep. So it's like, I drew up just this rough sketch, and it just kind of lived on our forum. It's like, oh, it's kind of interesting. Then, uh, like six, nine months later, or something like that, people were started talking about it again. I'm like, I gotta just build one of these. So I have a machine shop. I've manufactured stuff for 20 years. I've done lots of machine automation in my time. So I'm like, you know, this is how I would do it. Yeah. And so I I started working on a final drawing. Um, you can actually download these files right on our GitHub.com yep. CBCNC. I'm telling you, it was. Uh, it was more of a, hey, I've got the means to do this. I can do this. Why not? Just yeah. It was just because. And it's not that I don't, when I do something, I do want to sell something, but I don't have these for sale. I don't have them like kitted up or in yep. a form, but you never know. <laughs> so if you guys want one of these, just pester Steve, but it's not going to be cheap. <laughs> It's, it's not going to be cheap, trust me. I already tried to get him to send me one with a truck and a trailer, and he said no. Isn't that right, Steve? <laughs> well, yes. That, that's a dick move, Steve. Dick move. <laughs> so I'm curious. Do you get a lot of people asking you if this requires any crazy electronics or anything to operate? Are they pretty blown away when it's just basically a desktop 3D printer with some upgraded motors? Yeah, the, the reaction is pretty um, priceless. The, the, the Alda Machine Rambo board is what we use in yep. our little desktop machines, you know, because they're just crazy reliable. Yeah. And so that's what's running this thing is a... a Rambo board, yep. and basically, instead of plugging in the teeny tiny stepper motors, we break off, it's so simple, the step, direction, enable, and you run them over to big amplifiers so you can get these stepper motor kits, and it just runs over there. Now you need that 72 volt DC supply, so it's a, yep. it's a really big supply, you need that power okay. uh, to actually move this thing around. But the big uh, free weights, they allow the, the counter bait. This whole thing weighs 90 pounds. Yeah. The entire rat's 90 pounds. There's 30 pounds on each tower that allows it to counterbalance the yeah. whole weight. I've actually, my son's uh, 80 pounds. Sam, this guy. <laughs> he, he, he weighed 80 pounds at the time. I made him. I had to make him. I said, get on there and hold on to that. I lifted him up several feet, and he let go because he chickened out. I said, oh, hold on. I could only get him a couple feet because I'm like, you're going to the ceiling. He wouldn't hold on. So I'm actually pretty amazed that this thing just runs on 110 because most stuff, big stuff like this in machine shops, all like 220 yeah, yeah, and requires special service. Anybody could literally, if they had the space for this thing, could plug it in out in the front yard with an extension cord and just run it. Unplug your wife's kitchen mixer, plug it into that 20 amp outlet, and you can run this thing and all the LEDs. There you go, guys. So if you want to get into the furniture business, creating your own furniture, all you need is a 50-gallon drum full of pellets, a parts daddy that you probably will have to really sweet talk, Steve, and have a lot of money to get, and a little bit of time. So the total build volume of this printer is one meter by three meters in height. So that's uh, that's a lot of millimeters. Wait, how many millimeters is that? It, the volume, print volume of this printer is 23 million cubic millimeters. So what you're saying is cubic millimeters. I'm saying cubic millimeters. Not spheric millimeters, cubic millimeters. No, 23 million cubic. You're really annoying me now, Jerry. All right, so let's test the stool out here. Those printers, 13 hours of printing, 301 pounds. I think it's solid. It's about 70 or 80 pounds of filament goes into this thing. That's pretty damn impressive. This massive claw chair is amazing, and it even supports my girthy figure. I could probably lose 100 pounds. I'm not going to lie to you guys. You can even print giant, worthless rotating wheels. Seriously, Steve, give me one. You're a dick, Steve. You're a dick. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the review. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments or come over to Twitter and tweet me. I am at Barnacles, and I would be happy to answer them. All the links to this and a lot of other stuff that CME CNC is doing will be down in the video description, so always expand the video description. Wow, look at that shirt. Oh, my gosh. 
Oh, but you're also holding the shirt of the traitor. Yeah! You looking at my Pikachu? Yeah, you are. Pika, Pika. Sam, what do you think of your dad's 3D printer? Shut up, Sam. Love you guys. Till next time.